dollars an ounce, and the Australian dollars at 94 US cents, 69 euro cents, 55 pence sterling. Let's uh, have a closer look at finance. We're joined in the studio by Rod North from Boss Communications. Rod North, good morning. Good, good to morning. see you. What's happening out there? Well, we've had um, a, a really good period over the last week with the Dow, uh, you know, reaching sort of record highs of uh, 17,000 off the particularly off the back of uh, some really good jobs data coming out of the US. And I think a lot of that's got to do with the fact that uh, the recovery in the US is sort of uh, mounting and uh, the implications of that being the biggest economy in the world are, are very positive, obviously, for countries like Australia as well. So we're sort of leveraging a bit off the back of that. Our share market's been moving up quite a bit as well. But I think probably what we're starting to see a bit more here is um, growth through acquisition because uh, there's lots of sort of takeover activity sort of in the wings and happening. So I think that's, uh, you know, a pretty interesting phase of the market to, to come into because over the last sort of five years it's really largely been organic growth. So I think strategic uh, acquisition and M&A activity are probably going to drive our market higher, I think, over the next uh, six to 12 months. Rod, just going to the Commonwealth Bank financial planning scandal, uh, we spoke about it last week. Yeah. Um, you think there's got some broader implications for, for other banks here? Well, yes, I don't think there's really been enough discussion about what's happening with the other uh, three major banks as well. And I think my biggest concern with this issue sort of relates to sort of more transparency and disclosure about what actually happens within the bank because I don't know about you but you know when you go in and just do the normal transaction in the bank you're often asked would you like you know some other assistance would you like to see a financial planner would you like insurance and you think, well why is this actually happening is this because those other members of the bank are on a level of remuneration that uh, you know that may or may not be appropriate or may or may not be disclosed I think there just needs to be a lot more disclosure about that because I think the incentive really should be more about you as the individual and what you're entitled to get in terms of service from a bank that's that's independent and, and also the recommendations that you get should also fall into that category as well. Well on that topic then, what do you make and what do you think would be the consequences for consumers of the winding back of some of those um, protections and disclosure requirements around financial planning that have now uh, gone through the Senate? Well I'm really unhappy about that. I think, I think if anything this sort of heightens the fact that it should really be on the agenda that we should be having a lot more discussion about the fact that you know you spend your lifetime building up uh, a wealth uh, position and then you go in and get financial advice, you need to know that the financial planner that you go to is actually going to give you uh, the best possible advice available, that there's no vested interest there and, and that, you know, basically, you know, in some cases you're a perfect stranger to these people and you've spent your lifetime making your money and, and you don't want uh, someone to give you bad advice and you lose all that money you worked hard for. None of us want that. No, not at all. <laughs> Rod, good to talk to you. Nice to see you again. Thanks. Now I think we have um, some sport for you.